स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया okay so good morning everyone so in today's lecture i am going to continue my discussion on isoperimetric problems okay so let let us just recall the major result that we derived in the last lecture what we derived was if we have to extremize if we have to extremize a functional j subject to subject to the constraint g which is an isoperimetric constraint so well let me denote it by i which was an isoperimetric constraint so this is my isoperimetric constraint then the result is the necessary condition for the extremal the necessary condition of for the extremal was the satisfaction of the following ode right so so j was integral f d dx so what we have is the following well let me call this as capital f minus partial f partial y is equal to 0 where where my capital f was uh, was f minus lambda g where lambda is a constant which is a real number okay so let us now look at uh, let us continue our discussion for the class of these set of problems and let us look at some examples where we impose isoperimetric constraints so my first example this morning is uh, we are going to revisit our catenary example the problem of catenary or finding the optimal shape of the cable subject to some uh, some uh, constraint on uh, on uh, on its uh, on its weight or on its potential energy so so we have to extremize we have to extremize the functional which was given by integral from x0 to x1 uh, y of square root 1 plus y prime square dx subject to subject to the length constraint subject to the length constraint given by i of y is equal to integral from x0 to x1 square root 1 plus y prime square dx which is given to be a fixed number let us say that is equal to l so this is the isoperimetric constraint that we have so then let us now to find the extremal let us assume although this assumption is not necessary in the general case but we are trying to simplify the problem let us assume without loss of generality that my x0 is 0 and my x1 is 1 so my my total domain length uh, along the x axis is 1 right so so and and further we assume that the height of the poles are also fixed right so poles that is the same height is also fixed right and this is positive so which means so given these set of assumptions it means that my fixed boundary conditions are y of 0 is equal to y of 1 is equal to h right so what i have is the following uh further we we also assume that that the length of the cable here is greater than 
because because if l is equal to 1 then the only solution that is possible is a straight line which is parallel to the x axis and if l is less than 1 then there won't be any solution it is quite intuitive to see that right okay so then so then we are going to directly use this result above so let us let me call this as star so we are going to use this result star to find the extremal so using using star i see that my my y which is the extremal is a solution to star right and in that case i get that so so i get that uh, it must be the solution to star and notice with with my capital f being the following it is f minus lambda g which is also equal to y times square root 1 plus y prime square minus lambda times square root 1 plus y prime square right notice that this quantity is independent of this quantity is independent of the variable x or the independent variable right uh, so so it is independent of x explicitly so which means we can use we can very well use the beltrami identity we can use the the beltrami identity which says that h given by y prime f of y prime minus f where the subscript y prime denotes the derivative of capital f with respect to to y prime the partial derivative this is set equal to a constant okay let me call this as c c0 so then when we plug in the value of f which is this quantity after simplifying i get the following following equation y minus lambda is divided by square root 1 plus y prime square times y prime square minus y minus lambda square root 1 plus y prime square is equal to a constant c not right so from here i can simplify this this result a little bit further in order to finally integrate y with respect to x so i see that i see that uh, after simplification so let me call this as my result double star so simplify simplify my double star and and integrate integrate with respect to x i see that this is also after doing all the steps let me write down the result so y comes out to be the following so y of x is lambda times lambda plus c1 cos hyperbolic of x minus c2 by c1 so that is my extremal this time the extremal with the lagrange constraint lambda so now the next set of steps is to look at this solution and see what are the plausible uh, values of c1 and c2 so to do that i am going to change my set of constants so i am going to introduce new set of constants my kappa 1 to be c1 and my kappa 2 to be minus c2 by c1 the new set of constants and i see that i see that with this set of constants i use my boundary condition so use y0 of h is equal to y1 this is also equal to h from here what i see is i get two sets of equation h minus lambda using the value y0 is equal to c1 times cos hyperbolic of of minus c2 by c1 which is kappa 2 right and c1 is c1 is kappa 1 and using y1 i get this is also equal to kappa 1 cos hyperbolic 1 by kappa 1 plus kappa 2 right so what we have are two sets of equations for three unknowns kappa 1 kappa 2 and lambda and of course we have the isoperimetric constraint that is an completely uh, uh, fully determined system 
and so to 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 find out some of these unknowns let us see that we have this one relation using the relation kappa cos hyperbolic kappa 2 is equal to this right hand side i get that so using this equality i see that my my kappa 2 comes out to be comes out to be minus 1 by 2 kappa 1 right minus 1 by 2 kappa 1 kappa 2 is minus 1 by 2 kappa 1 okay so then what do we have then we have well so we have found one constant in terms of other and we can further use the isoperimetric constraint so using so using the isoperimetric constraint constraint i see that l the integral is from 0 to 1 square root of 1 plus y prime square dx and this is after plugging in the value of y prime take the derivative and we see that this is also equal to integral from 0 to 1 cos hyperbolic of x by kappa 1 plus kappa 2 dx right and we see that this is also equal to 2 kappa 1 sin hyperbolic 1 by 2 kappa 1 ok so then the next set of steps are we can well here we have here we have used the fact that kappa 2 is equal to negative 1 by 2 kappa 1 so we have used that fact to eliminate kappa 2 ok so then uh, well so let me introduce another another set of variable introduce uh, xi equal to 1 by 2 kappa 1 so what we see is from here from this isoperimetric constraint i have this new equation that l xi is equal to sin hyperbolic of uh, of xi uh, okay so now uh, we need to solve this equation for xi notice that this is a transcendental equation with the left hand side a, a, a polynomial and the right hand side a exponential function and uh, in few lectures back we have shown that uh, in general we will have two solutions if uh, l is beyond a, uh, a critical value right so notice that note that first of all xi equal to 0 uh, is a solution right so let me let me call this equation as my 1 so is a solution of 1 right so this is equal to 0 is a solution of 1 uh, so so this means that since xi is 1 by 2 kappa 1 this means that kappa 1 goes to infinity right so so this means this means that if kappa 1 goes to infinity then y which was equal to lambda plus the the solution lambda plus kappa 1 cos hyperbolic of of uh, x by kappa 1 plus kappa 2 right so this this goes to this goes to uh, this goes to lambda plus cos hyperbolic of 0 which is equal to a constant right so what we get is if i have if i have xi equal to 0 the trivial solution then y is a constant right and that constant can nothing can not be anything else other than h because at the boundary y is equal to h which means that xi equal to 0 gives me the trivial solution which is a line parallel to the x axis with y component h right and this is not the solution that we are looking after so so this is the trivial case this is the trivial case and we are going to discard that case so now now we know that for l l greater than 1 so that is why we had assumed that l was greater than 1 so there exists two two solutions there exists two to two solutions of one and that has been shown few lectures back that l 
so for l beyond a critical value in general there exists two solutions so of course we see that this is if if we have a solution let us say xi hat then even the negative xi hat is the solution right because this uh, equation 1 is an is even with respect to xi right so now on the so, so what we get is the following so so let us assume let us assume xi is one of the solutions xi hat so let us assume one of the solutions so in that case using using this condition i see that this is also equal to 1 by 2 kappa 1 or kappa 1 is 1 by 2 xi hat right now which means which means that kappa 2 which is negative 1 by 2 kappa 1 as the assumption that we began with this is also equal to xi hat negative xi hat ok so then then we use let me call let me call these set of conditions well let me call these set of conditions as my condition number a right so we are going to use a to see that my using this set of condition i see that i i get my constant lambda which is h minus 1 by 2 xi hat cos hyperbolic of xi hat right and finally finally my my solution y since all of my constants kappa 1 kappa 2 and lambda has been determined so my solution y of x comes out to be the following it is h plus 1 by 2 xi hat times cos hyperbolic xi hat 2x minus 1 right minus cos hyperbolic of xi hat right okay so notice uh, so since my x is between 0 and 1 notice that the largest uh, the largest value of of this quantity so this quantity is for x between 0 to 1 this quantity lies between minus 1 to plus 1 right so this this uh, straight line lies between minus 1 to plus 1 which means which means that this bracketed quantity can only be less than or equal to 0 because the largest value of this term the left hand side term will be bounded will be bounded above by this right hand side term so so what we have is that in general y of x is less than equal to h right so the result that we have is so this means that the cable that the shape of the cable that we are trying to find hangs hangs down from the pole right which means that if we were to draw the sh the cable where the cable is hanging from two poles of the same height where the x coordinates are 0 1 we expect that that the cable is hanging down right so the cable is hanging down now further uh, we further if note that if my l is very large so suppose suppose my l is very very long so for a cable extremely large we see that we see that the solution to this equation this particular equation 1 will will give some erroneous results so so if l is very large we see that from from 1 i see that xi goes to infinity or or kappa 1 if xi goes to infinity then then plugging it into this solution i see that that y is less than 0 right okay so the solution xi hat goes to infinity and that gives from here 
that y is less than 0 which means that this is an abnormal result or what it is saying is that the model that we have the model breaks down breaks down right or in other words the cable the cable lies on the ground right so there is no such there is nothing in terms of potential energy which is governing the shape of the cable so in that case the cable will be completely lying on the ground so this is the case where l goes to infinity right so the cable is lying on the ground so so that completes the analysis of this example and this is the first example with uh, with the isoperimetric constraint setup let us look at more examples of this similar category the second example that i have is on dedos on dedos problem so we have looked at dedos problem on several occasion so now we are going to look at the same problem with a length constraint setup on on the curve right so the problem again says we have to determine the height of the curve we need to determine so let me just draw so we have a curve let us fix so these are my end points x0 x1 and this is the height of the curve y of x so we need to determine y of x y of x such that such that i say let us also say that x0 is minus 1 and x1 is 1 such that y of minus 1 is equal to y of 1 is equal to 0 and and the perimeter the perimeter of the curve the perimeter of the curve described described by l greater than 2 the perimeter of the curve described by l greater than 2 and the reason we have taken l strictly greater than 2 is because if l is equal to 2 then the only length will be lying parallel to the x axis because the length along the x axis is 2 and l less than 2 doesn't make sense we won't get a curve so l has to be necessarily greater than 2 so then uh so so and and the area that we describe area is enclosed is enclosed by this function y of x y of x and and the line segment the line segment from minus 1 to 1 right so so the the length of the curve that we are trying to describe is this one and this one right so the total length of the curve that we have is the length which lies along the x axis plus the length which lies along above the x axis right so that is that is what we have so then so then what so so let us look at this uh this problem to find the extremal so we have to so so we have to extremize we have to extremize the area so the area is my functional j of y integral from minus 1 to 1 y dx subject to subject to the length constraint which is integral from minus 1 to 1 uh, uh, square root of 1 plus y prime square dx which is the arc length right so we have to and then this is given the total length is given to be l so this is fixed so then we have to we have to make sure that uh, well so since we have already taken care of the fact that l is greater than 2 we have removed certain abnormal situations where the solutions uh, solution or the extremal is unique or the extremal is uh, doesn't exist or we have already removed so note that we have already removed we have removed the abnormal case abnormal case or the case with rigid rigid extremal 
right because my the my total length is greater than 2 so some of the length will be above the x axis so we will get a shape with a non zero area okay so then so then which so what we have is my y will be the extremal y will be the solution solution to the euler lagrange ddx of partial partial y of f minus partial f partial partial y equal to 0 where f is y minus lambda times square root 1 plus y prime square right and again we can go ahead by observing that this quantity f is independent it's independent of the variable x it's independent of the variable x explicitly which means we can again use the beltrami identity so beltrami identity okay so so what we have is we we have that h of y comma y prime is going to be uh, y prime f of y prime minus f is equal to a constant so that's my beltrami identity and after plugging in this function capital f i see that we get the following expression minus lambda y prime square divided by 1 plus y prime square uh, minus y minus lambda 1 plus y prime square right so this is equal to c1 so there so then what we have is we could well the, the next set of steps is we simplify this uh, this uh, expression this equation and then solve for y. So, when when we solve when we solve for y I get that well first of all let me call this as star. So, we simplify star and we get the following expression y plus c 1 square root 1 plus y prime square after simplification this is equal to lambda right and then after integrating after integrating y plus c 1 divided by square root lambda square minus y plus c 1 square d x we get this is equal to x plus c 2 right. So, my c 1 and c 2 are constants of integration ok. So, the next set of steps in integrating will involve you know a certain substitution we can certainly we can certainly substitute we can substitute y plus c 1 equal to uh, equal to lambda sin phi and the moment we do that this integral becomes very straightforward and we see that we see that this particular integration leads to x plus c 2 equal to lambda cos phi right. So, so here is the equation for x and here is the equation for y from here what we get is that the extremal is such that we have x plus c 2 square plus y plus c 1 square is equal to lambda square. So, this is this implies that the extremal lies on the circle with radius lambda. So, lambda is lambda is the radius of the circle right ok. So, then then we can use well all it remains now is to eliminate these constants c 1 and c 2 uh, by using by using our boundary conditions that we have right. So, using boundary conditions I see that y of minus 1 is equal to y of 1 which is also equal to 0 and from here I immediately I can I can figure out that c 2 is 0 right and then and then 
what I see that uh, well, so immediately I see that C2 is 0. Further, I can use we have not used my uh, our isoperimetric constraint. So, if we use our isoperimetric constraint, I see that L is given by well, just plug the, the solution y as a function of x into the integral to see that L is coming out to be 2 times square root C 1 square plus 1 tan inverse 1 by C 1, 2 times square root C 1 square plus 1 tan inverse 1 by C 1. Now, notice that, so since my length L is bigger than 0, what I have is, since L is bigger than 0, then I must have that C 1 is also bigger than 0. Otherwise. Uh, since since the sign of this expression on the right is completely governed by governed by the tan inverse so and that is positive only when c is positive okay so then so then since since i have since i have that c1 is from 0 to infinity so c1 is is non negative it means that my L. So, if I plug C 1 equal to 0, I get that L is L is going to be uh, will be going to be pi, right. So, L is L is the upper bound of L is pi and if C 1 is infinity, we will see that L is equal to L is equal to 2 here that can be shown, right. So, which means that L lies between 2 and pi given these values of C 1. Okay. So, further further note that, so let me call this relation as double star, note that this relation double star is monotonic, monotonically decreasing, decreasing with respect to C 1 monotonically decreasing with respect to C 1, which means that there exists there exists a unique since we have a monotonic function of C 1, there exists a unique C 1, uh, there exists a unique C 1, C 1 which which satisfies which satisfies uh, double star and also the set of conditions let me call these conditions as as a right so and a so so we do not at this stage explicitly find the constant c1 except by except showing that c1 is unique which satisfies which lies on the circle as well as which satisfies the isoperimetric constraint and saying that C1 can readily be found. Uh, okay. So, so we end the discussion on this problem.